On day one, I spawned in the world of One Piece as Zoro, and I have three main goals in mind. Number one, explore as much of the sea as I can. Number two is to acquire all three of Zoro's swords as fast as I can. And number three is to train with the Mihawk and acquire all of Zoro's hockey. I start off by exploring Fusha Village and start taking some things I will need like a crafting table and books. I get some wood so I can craft some sticks and some wooden tools to get me started. I then head towards the front of Fusha Village and spot a chest stating free stuff. Inside the chest was a pirate sword, which I can use for now, along with some pirate armor and a small boat which is perfect for me to start sailing. Right before sailing, I saw a pig and decided to get it, so I have at least some food on my journey. I went inside quickly to cook and started sailing on my tiny boat finally to try and become the best swordsman out there. On day two, I spotted a pirate boat. I went to the bottom of the boat and just started mining through and somehow I got the right spot on the first try and found a chest with some bread, fish, and soup. I saw a pirate soldier and used these trap doors to my advantage and slayed the pirate soldier with ease. I then go further in the ship and find another pirate, but this one had a gun. I charged him with my sword and finished him off. Afterwards, I stumbled upon another pirate with a gun, but this was a green one and looked way scarier, but the outcome was the same with the last pirate. I walked a little bit forward and found a a chest with some berry and gun but since i'm zoro i cannot use the guns at all while looting the chest a pirate with a sword came down to me but i just sliced him very easily as you guys can see i got that double sword style but i'm just using a pipe as a sword for now i headed upstairs and some more pirates wanted to smoke for me i took out the first one easily but the second one had a huge sword and was inflicting more damage than i like so i quickly covered myself with dirt to rejuvenate myself quickly i went from the outside and broke the windows to steal the loot in the chest and while i did a pirate was charging me so once i did I got the loot, jumped down in the water, I was searching for my boat and my inventory, and finally took off with very low health though. On day three, I spotted Alvida's ship. I went on board and searched for some loot, but nothing was there. I looked at the island next to me and see some marines and pirates. I went around the island so I didn't need to fight them and started searching the buildings, and to my surprise, Alvida was there and willing to sell me some stuff. She offered a mace, her hat, and a barrel, all the things which I really didn't need. So that was my sign to take my leave so I can find Mihawk's castle as fast as possible. Later in the day, I finally arrived to Shelltown and near the deck was a sign stating that Shelltown is under marine protection. And you know we don't like marines at all. Night comes and I already explored some of Shelltown but then stumbled upon a big blue glowing castle. Since it was dark, I decided to place a bed to sleep and make it morning. On day 4, the entrance of the castle had barbed wires and cannons pointed at me. I was scared to walk through it, but thank god they weren't loaded. At the front, there were two chests and in the first one was a bunch of random blocks, metal bars, and marine armor along with some berries and donuts which we need and in the second chest holy there was so much donuts guns and swords but we can't use the guns but the donuts for sure will help i went inside the castle exploring and found a marine trader and he told me he doesn't trade with pirate scum like me so i got kind of mad and we left the island on day five we finally made it to orange town and i spot two sea bulls near land i took one out to see what they drop and they just dropped some sort of grass i go exploring the rest of orange town and most of the buildings are just empty i go to the top of one of the buildings and see a lot of wanted posters. I check inside this area and found that pirate the buggy was just chilling there. He was selling a bunch of his clothes along with a devil fruit encyclopedia but we know I don't need that. I then left to another building nearby and see another trader. This trader is selling a bunch of food and sea king meat which is really useful. It heals you like no other food can so it's going to be really important for me. On day six once I acquire some sea king meat it's my time to depart from this island and on to the next place. This next place happens to be nearby and it was a pillager boat. I got my pickaxe and started mining the bottom of the boat and accidentally hit a chest and so many vegetables came flying out. Once inside the boat, I head up the ladder and so many armored skeletons were attacking me with swords, but I held up my shield till they broke my defense and I jumped off the boat and back my bio to start dipping to the next island. On day 7, I finally arrived to Syrup Village, aka Usopp's hometown. Once on land, I found a building with a pirate trader inside and he was just selling sea king meat with other foods. I then stumbled upon Usopp's homegirl's home and found Usopp chilling outside. He was selling his slingshot weapon, mini Mary, and a devil fruit encyclopedia, which again is useless, and all of his gear, which we do not need. Towards the front of the mansion was two chests, and in the first one, it had 1,000 berries along with some random blocks, and the second chest had 3,000 berries along with a mini mary which is perfect i checked the rest of the mansion out and found nothing else i then head towards the other side of the village and see a boat i also get greeted by some llamas but don't know what they really do i then start mining at the bottom of the boat and enter in and get greeted by nami's chest saying 
don't even think about it she really thinks we're gonna listen so you know your boy just checked out the chest and oh my god so many berries in the chest it was insane i then go and check out a room full of chests and i did not expect to find 40 diamond and gold boots i then go and check the rest of the boat out but found nothing else on day eight i take my leave from the ship to go on to the next place almost two days of traveling and on day 10 that place we arrive at happens to be where sanji is at the restaurant once i get on the ship i start running to make my way to the main dining area and found sanji just standing there and when I talked to him, he was selling his clothing along with a bunch of food. I made my way to the top floor where the chef was and there was two chests next to him. The first chest had some food items and berry, which is really good. I then talked to the chef and he was just selling a bunch of different foods. But when I checked out the second chest, I was shocked. There was enough food to last us the whole 100 days and some berries. Night comes and I go to the front of the restaurant to get greeted by a bunch of mobs. So I decide to take as many out as I can. I jump off the restaurant to check out a nearby ship. But once on the ship, there was nothing else for me to do. And I jumped off the ship onto my mini Mary to go to the next island. On day 12, we finally arrive at Arlong Park. And there's a sign saying it's under control by Captain Kruger. I then head inside the building and spot a totem of Undying and pick it up to use alongside my sword just for now. I then see a fisherman pirate trader and he's selling some swords and some other good stuff but I'm only looking for Zoro swords for now. I then head upstairs and inside this room I see two chests and in the first one he found jackpot. So much seeking meat with berries which is super good and in the second chest was a bunch of random blocks with some berries which is also really good. I then head over to the next village where Nami grew up on and spot two chests at the middle of the island. Inside the first chest was 3,000 berries which is beautiful and in the second chest 6,000 berries along with a staff which I'm going to use till I can acquire my three swords i then go to the outskirts of the village where nami's house was and see her staff sticking out the door i then get greeted by her and she's selling a staff with some oranges once i check around her house and inside a chest was just filled with bread and a lot of orange things i finish up checking her house and find nothing and decide to get on my mini mary and head to the next island on day 14 i finally arrived at lock town i go inside and spot the place where luffy was standing on because the last king of pirates got executed right on that stand it was honestly just refreshing staring at it i then clicked a button and smoker appeared out of nowhere but would not talk to me because i was apparently pirate scum i then go exploring the rest of lock town and see a big ugly fish and then go up to a tower and see a nice looking fireplace i also run into a pirate trader that's selling stuff but he's not selling anything that looks interesting so i get all my mini mary to go and continue the journey of finding mihawk on day 16 i finally arrive at whiskey p there was a lot of marines in the front so i went around i then entered a building and there was a sign stating marines only them stating that made me 100 certain i'm going through that door i went up the stairs and got greeted by a pirate trader he was selling lapis lazuli which is really important because now i can use my enchantment table and use it on my current sword just to get a damage boost till i can acquire my hockey and three swords once i left the building i finally spotted a dojo sensei which can teach me different sword techniques and all the hockey which is perfect i then start a sword trial and have to collect 30 bones and kill 15 enemies while running towards them i explore a little bit more of the village till night comes and start fighting mobs to complete my sword trial i don't know about you guys but skeletons are the most most annoying thing ever. The knockback they do with their bows are seriously annoying. Day 17 comes and I finally finished off my last sword trial and got both of them completed. I decided to leave the island but on my way I stumbled upon a bandit but took him out with ease with this new sword. I then head off to the next island with my mini Mary. On day 19 I arrived to a little garden and holy crap did I get greeted by so many mobs. I got exploded by a creeper and left at 2 HP but the sea king meat helped a ton. I started running through little garden and get greeted by some skeletons that just kept knocking me back but I just kept on running i finally see a building that's lit with torches so you know that's a really good sign and that we're supposed to basically be there on the other side of the building was a zombie villager so i just took him out very quickly next to him was two chests and in one of them five golden keys with ten thousand berries holy and in the second chest was 2500 berries with some other random junk on day 20 i decided to check the cave out at little garden and when i checked inside it was just a bunch of mobs and nothing else once i saw that i knew it was my time to leave so i got on my mini mary again to go to the next island later that night i finally made it to drum island once i get on land i find another dojo sensei and i just talked to him to start up another trial while i'm here i start making my way across this makeshift zip line by crouch walking and on day 21 i checked out the gondola but nothing was there so i just kept going and finally made it to the top of the building once i go inside i get greeted by a spider and take it out quick i go upstairs and find two chests and in the first chest was a bunch of food along with 3,000 berries and in the second one was some of chopper's gear 
ton of potions and 10,000 berries. I took the egg spawner out of the chest and spawned that damn bunny. And this guy was mad aggressive for no reason and flying so high up. But I eventually did take him out. I then start mining some diamond from the building to use for myself if I ever needed it later on. Eventually night comes and I start running towards the water and get on my mini Mary to dip to the next island. On day 23, I finally arrived to Alabasta and go inside and find two chests. Inside one chest was a Kung Fu spawner and these guys hit so hard I almost died from him but finished him off at least. Inside the other chest was a bunch of guns and random blood. Night comes and I go underground in this castle and found a chest with some berries and a pirate trader spawner. He was selling guns and swords. In the second chest was some more berries along with some random blood. Out of nowhere a marine with a sword started charging me but I finished him off with more than half of my health gone. Afterwards two bandits charged me but I finished him off and started talking to crocodile. He was selling his coat, hook, and cigar but I didn't need any of them. I go to another building and find two chests and in one of them was 10,000 berries, a hook, and a pirate trader. I then decide to get on my mini Mary and leave Alabasta. On day 25 we arrived to Jaya. I checked the nearby houses and nothing. Towards the back was a open house with some chests nearby and in the first one was berries, a trident, diamond chest plate, and sea key meat which is gonna be really useful. I then spawned a pirate trader and it was ace to my surprise. He was selling a bunch of different swords and lapis lazuli. I then used that lapis to enchant my sword and head off to the next island. On day 27, I finally arrived to Skypea and riding my boat and looking at the sky felt amazing. I then head even higher up to Skypea and get spawned near a forest and start running through it. I then spot some chests nearby and inside were berries with Skypean civilians and Skypean traders. These traders were selling bread dials but not the other ones for some odd reason. I then check the second chest out and find all the dials there like the flash dial, impact dial and axe dial. I tried using the impact dial and holy crap it worked. It's basically like a TNT exploding but you don't get damaged using it which is really insane but we're Zoro so we don't need that. I then start running through the jungle area where Zoro and all of them were and see the place where there's four paths so I just took a random one and that random one happened to be the second on the right and I just started sprinting through it. On my way through the path there were skeletons shooting me and knocking me back which was really annoying but eventually I made it to where our ship got stuck. I checked inside and there was pretty much nothing there. Then on day 28 to 38 I explored the rest of Skypea like the gold area and higher up in Skypea. We also visited Long Green Long Land and then lastly we visited Water 7. On day 39 I finally arrived at Mihawk's castle with my boat. Once I get on land I spot the huge castle and make my way inside. Once inside I get greeted by mobs but these mobs weren't regular ones. They did so much more damage than the regular ones did. I keep exploring and finally found Zoro. When I talked to him I finally had everything I needed. He was selling all three of his swords and all of of his gear and when I put everything on I finally look like Zoro with all the gear on. I make my way in the castle quickly to find Mihawk before I get jumped by all those mods. Once I talk to Mihawk I quickly bought Yoru off him just for fun and now I'm going to start my intense training at this island with the Mihawk. 46 days later and 46 days of very intense training. I finally unlocked all my hockey and all of my sword abilities. We got the sword dash move along with having hockey on our swords which is going to be a big upgrade for sure. We got other things like sword slashes and bangs when we swing our sword. And we also got a sick move where we fly up and dash down on the floor with flames causing everything around us to get burned. On day 88, I finally arrived to Eni's lobby on my mini Mary. When I head deeper in Eni's lobby, I get greeted by a bunch of bandits. I then activate my sword hockey and then use my sword slash move and hit all of them. I then went in to finish the last two off with my sword easily. I then head even more deeper in and activate my sword hockey yet again and I spot someone with a hockey around one of their arms. I throw a sword slash at them and then charge up my flying dash move with flames and finally struck it and took him out. I then spot a few more people with swords and don't even need to touch them and use my sword slices and move from my distance because of how powerful I am now. All of them flew and went bye bye after that. I head even more deeper in and did the same thing with my sword slashes and holy crap did I send them flying. I then spot Ace and he's selling some dials along with some swords. I continue on in Eni's lobby with more of my sword slashes demolishing everyone and using my sword dash making it look like I have super speed. I keep rampaging on flying in the air with my sword dash, catching people on fire and demolishing them with my hockey covered sword and just dash and finish the rest of them off. I make my way across to the Eni's lobby castle and get greeted by a bunch of stairs. I finally found a room with chests in it and one of them had so much seeking me and that was the biggest thing we we're gonna need. It also had a garp boat and some berries which we could use because everything else was pretty much useless at this point for me. I used my flying sword dash move from the top of the stairs and took no damage going down which is pretty cool. On day 92, I finally made it to Thriller Bark with my Garp boat, 
and get greeted by two chests, which had a lot of egg spawners and shadow food. The next chest had some cookies and milk, and then I spent the rest of the day exploring Thriller Bark, but there was honestly nothing worthy there, so I just decided to take my leave. On day 93, I finally arrived to Sabote with my Garp boat. I get greeted by some mobs at the front and didn't want to waste any more time, so I activated my sword hockey to take them out very quickly and use my sword dash move to travel faster. I head inside and found some chests with a bunch of random blocks, some egg spawners, a sunny boat, and some berries. When I placed down one of them pirate captain spawners, this man was going berserk. He was moving so fast hitting me, I couldn't even touch him. I just kept persisting and using my sea king meat with my sword slice moves and some other moves. When doing so, I finally take him out, but I did not expect this pirate captain to give me that much of a hassle at all. Night comes and I make my way across the water to the other side of Sabote. I talk to some pirate traders selling some swords and get greeted by some annoying bird and mobs and just take them out because they were kind of loud on us. I found a bridge that led to the other side and just started running across it. I finally make it to the other side and spot some chests. Inside the chest were so much candies and snacks and all that and inside the other chest was some berries along with some other desserts. I then go and explore the rest of Sabote for some time and end up finding nothing else so I just got back on my boat to go explore the next place. On day 95 I stumble upon a marine boat and decide to take them on with my new move. I jumped up with my sword flame move and then used my sword dash move to enter in the boat and took someone out right away. I felt unstoppable and at this point I I did activate my sword hockey earlier and just kept swinging on all the marines and I do spot the captain and chase some more people down in the water and finish them off with my sword slice. I then fight the captain using all my abilities and moves and he just kept running around like a weirdo and I could barely touch him. I just kept persisting at him using all my sword abilities and using my sea king meat and then he flew in the water but I just kept fighting and using my sword slash move and finally ended him. On day 98 I then head towards impel down but oh my god the combat fever just kept destroying my health and I had to run through so much seeking me just to survive it. I finally arrive outside of Impel Down and head across the bridge towards the inside and finally arrive. I searched through the entire different levels of Impel Down and trying to find Warden Magellan but couldn't find him no matter where I look. On day 100 after Impel Down I finally arrived back to Zoro's hometown to test my power against Buggy the Clown. I pretty much just kept swinging on him with my hockey activated swords and used my sword slice abilities and finally ended him off with my flying flame sword spike downwards and took him out. I then fight Arlong and used my sword dash move to start the fight and slashed him very hard twice and finished him off with my flame spike move just like Bug. I then fight Alvita and use the same exact moves on her like I did the last two and finished her off very quickly once I activated my sword hot. Since you guys know I destroyed everyone, I was like, you know what, let me fight Mihawk because I'm the strongest swordsman now and I ran at Mihawk with a hit and, um, I mean like, <laughs>